So the PlayStation 3 ceased production uh, recently this week. So I thought a good way to say goodbye would be to showcase all of the games that I've had fond memories of and the ones I've had the best, you know, the best, most notable memories of. So for that, I want to show you guys the 11 pound beast itself, the PlayStation 3, the original one, the fat model. Oh, hold it up, holding it upside down. This was the one my dad got back in 2000, in 2008, which was two years after the release of the, uh, of the PlayStation 3 in 2006. And this model, the one I have, um, the fat one, this does not play PlayStation 2 games. I wish it did, but it doesn't. I I, I remember trying it out back uh, when I first heard about um, being able to play PS3 games, I mean PS2 games on a PlayStation 3, and it baffled me. I was disappointed. And the original PlayStation 3, well, the very first model, it had more stuff onto it. I mean, it had more stuff put onto it than the PlayStation, I mean, then this PlayStation 3 does. Um, my stepbrother also owns the Swimmer, the Slim PlayStation 3, which was the second model that came out. And my dad at his apartment, he has the PlayStation 3 Super Slim, which is my least favorite. And before, I know you guys are going to call me lazy for this, but one of the reasons I don't like it is because you can't eject the disc from your, um, from, you can't eject the disc from your remote. I know it seems stupid, but... <laughs> And the shape of it just looks so, so, it just looks so stupid, honestly. But we're not here to talk about that. So, anyways, gonna put this down. This is also, this is also gonna be a long video that I've had, uh, that's taken numerous planning, so, yeah. Now, the first game we're gonna start off with is Street Fighter IV. Now, my dad, this was the first game my dad played on, uh, Christmas of 2008, back when he got the PlayStation 3. And, um, and the other game he also had was, um, was Grand Theft Auto 4, which, um, obviously I was not allowed to play, especially in front of my mom, who would have flipped out on me if I ever touched that game, or any of the PlayStation 2 Grand Theft Auto games. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the first two games he had on that console was Grand Theft Auto 4 and Street Fighter 4, which, strangely enough, both have the 4 in the title. <laughs> now... This had numerous re-releases, like Super Street Fighter 4, Ultra Street Fighter 4. It was, it was really crazy um, what Capcom was doing with Street Fighter 4 in general. And honestly, I just didn't really feel like coughing up the money just to get the next version of the same game, with just with a few more characters and a few more skins. It just, it just felt shallow to me. But hey, it's kind of worth it if you, um, it's kind of worth it if you're just uh, shopping and you see the game for cheap. So yeah. Now the next game just so happens to be a fighting game. Tekken 6, one of my favorite fighting games on the console, next to the Blaze Blue titles. Yeah. Now, Tekken 6, what can I say about it? I got this during uh, Christmas of 2011, and um, it was one of the many games I got um, during Christmas. Um, there's also one other game which, <laughs> oh man, I have, I have so many stories to tell about PlayStation 3 too, uh, but still. There was also a few other games I have on my, um, I got for Christmas on December of 2011. But Tekken 6 is one of my, is my favorite Tekken title ever. Mainly because of the, mainly because of the character roster, the environments, the fighting system, especially the little rage system too, where you deal more damage if you, if you're about to, um, if you're, if your character is about to like get knocked out. Really awesome. And, and my favorite character right now, ever since, um, Ever since Tekken Dark Resurrection, which I have right here, um, Tekken Dark Resurrection, ever since that, my favorite character has been none other than Sergei Dragunov, mainly because of his combos, and he's, uh, the, he's the strong silent type during his story arcs. Now this game, I... <sighs> now my dad rented this game before, um, uh, my dad rented this game for me on the 360 many times before on Friday nights. It's Assassin's Creed 2. The memory... Oh, almost dropped it. The memories I have had with this game, they, um, it all started back in uh, 2011 when my friend Nathaniel, he would let me um, borrow the game in exchange for, strangely enough, Sonic 06, which was... Uh, thankfully, he didn't pay money for Sonic 06 because I would have felt bad for even making that transaction. I mean, let's be honest, who would pay who would pay me like five or ten dollars for five, I mean, for Sonic 06, dude? <laughs> but this is my, it has to be, it is my favorite Assassin's Creed game, like out of all the, all the games in the series, next to, um, next to Assassin's Creed Revelations, which everyone hates, but I, I personally like it. So those, those two games are a favorite of mine. 
Matter of fact, I have it uh, down. Matter of fact, I have Revelations down here. I got. Oh yeah, I got this one for Christmas in 2011 as well. Now, anyways, Assassin's Creed 2: The Story of Ezio Auditore, everyone's favorite um, Assassin's Creed character. And um, to be honest, the series took sort of a down, sort of a downward then upward spi spiral after um, after Assassin's Creed Revelations, starting with Assassin's Creed. I know I'm giving away some unpopular opinions, but I mean, uh, did I say Assassin's Creed? Assassin's Creed Three, but um, Connor, he's an interesting character. I mean, like he's one of the. Uh, messed up my glasses. He's one of the few Native American characters in gaming, next to Nightwolf and. Um, I could list off some others, but there are. I really can't think of any. But anyways, Connor's it's sort of an interesting character, but at the same time, he's extremely boring and shallow, sp um, spouting out random, random, just, just random lines and stuff. I, I had a hard time even feeling bad for him um, at, at the start of his story, and as a matter of fact, all the characters around him just suck. Ugh, man. And then, um, the other Assassin's Creed games that followed, yeah. Now, Assassin's Creed 4, the one my girlfriend loves the most, I, I love that one. That one's pretty awesome. I, that's, there's no denying. Assassin's Creed 4 is, is pretty awesome. Okay. Okay, do I want to do this one? No. Alright, let's do this one first. So, Demon Souls. Now, if you've been following me since, uh, summer of 2016, when I made my video game pickups video, you might remember that story I told you guys about how my dad, uh, how my dad and I go out, um, used to go out and rent games on Friday nights, and um, how I chose this game when it first launched. Now, Demon Souls is like one of those obscure, was like one of those obscure RPGs that you just had to dig deep to find. And funny and crazy enough, if it crazy enough, Atlas was the one to publish this, because if Atlas hadn't published Demon Souls, Dark Souls never would have gotten off the ground. Or so they say. So, anyways, Demon Souls is the uh, spiritual successor to, or not spiritual successor, but I guess the precursor to Dark. I'm sorry, I can't choose the words correctly. I'm not thinking straight. But anyways, Demon Souls is the first game in the lineup of the Souls series. Um, it all began with Demon Souls, which had so many genius mechanics, which is why many people grew to love it. And Sony, uh, not Sony, uh, from software, the creators of the game saw this. So what happened was that they went on to create a spiritual successor, Dark Souls. My, um, oh yeah, and they also went to create on Dark Souls 2, which is my, uh, my least favorite in the game, in the franchise because of how, because of how crazy, there are times where it just gets straight, straight up, um, unfair. I, I know what you're thinking, um, I know what you're thinking, um, you're gonna probably type in the comments saying, get good or something. But no, no, Dark Souls 2, uh, and let me tell you something, I've beaten Dark Souls, okay? I've beaten Dark Souls, so I know what I'm talking about. Dark Souls 2 just has some stuff that is just straight up unfair, and some of the stuff that happens really sometimes isn't even the player's fault. But that's a rant for another day. As a matter of fact, you can watch Matthew Matosis tear that game apart. But anyways, Dark um, Demon Souls was like my first taste of the Souls games when I rented that from Blockbuster. God, man, like the game was a serious challenge. Getting through the first, uh, getting through that little castle at the beginning was a challenge. As a matter of fact, I remember the very first level of the game. Um, I mean, yeah, the very first level where you take, where you find that, where at the end there's this little boss that ambushes you, and the funny part is that even if you somehow manage to beat the boss, it, you'll die anyways. <laughs> oh man, I can only imagine someone's reaction, um, dying to that thing after beating it. Now the controls for Demon Souls, they are fluent, and they're somewhat easy to get used to. You know, you got, you got your straight flock on, uh, roll, rolling attacks, stuff like that. So, it's easy to get used to, but um, you just gotta change your tactics up um, when you're around certain enemies. So, here's two other games. One, alright, the first one we're gonna do, Bioshock 2. Now, I got this back in uh, 2013 when I, when I first moved into Yorktown, Virginia from my home, I mean from uh, when I used to live in Northern Virginia in Woodbridge. But anyways, I first went and got this uh, when I moved into that house. Um, Bioshock 2 is actually a pretty good game, and it's not as good. It's not going to be as good as the first game, but still, it's a pretty good. It's a pretty good game. It, it holds a candle up to the first game. I'll give it that. Uh, it, it tried some new stuff, like a uh, dual wield. Like you were playing as a big daddy, you're dual wielding one hand for 
you had like one hand for um, one hand for guns, the other hand for like uh, using the other hand for like using the uh, I forgot the name of the stuff already. <laughs> oh, but still, it's crazy, man. Because Bioshock Two, it's it's really it actually it gets it actually gets the job done. I just can't believe it. Wait. I'm sorry, man. I'm just looking at the back of the box, but still, I just couldn't believe it. It got the job done. It wasn't good. At, um, it wasn't going to be as outstanding, or, or I don't know. It wasn't going to be as outstanding as Bioshock One, but still, it got the job done with the dual wielding. You got to play as a big daddy, and the story. It actually, the story actually worked for, um, for once. On the other hand, was Bioshock Infinite, my least favorite in the Bioshock trilogy. God, man. So I have many problems with Bioshock Infinite. But first, let me tell you something. It's a fun shooter. I'll give it that. It's a fun, it's a fun, fantastic shooter. But as a Bioshock game, it fails completely. First off, the um, first off, it takes place in Colombia, which wouldn't be so bad, honestly. It wouldn't be so bad if it's um, if the setting of Colombia is actually not that bad. The thing is that the thing is that the game is so linear. Bioshock Infinite felt like a roller coaster ride. I mean, like, it felt like, well, no, not a, like a roller coaster ride, but on a sight, it felt like you were going on a sightseeing tour while shooting dudes, gunning down dudes, like, just tearing their heads off with a skyhook and everything. I don't know. Bioshock 1, it was, it allowed, I mean, Bioshock 1 and 2, it allowed you to go and go and let you do whatever you want. So it wasn't, it wasn't that non-linear, like, open world, but it lets you stray off of the game's main path, do some, uh, do, get some collectibles, you know, stuff like that. Um... Not only that, but the giant, but those giant monsters, I forgot their names. Um, those old dudes that are like in those huge, huge suits. Those giant monsters, the thing I have a problem with is that they're unavoidable. Like, you, because in the first two Bioshock games, you chose to attack the Big Daddy. It's just that, um, before you even chose to attack the Big Daddy, it's just that you did a little planning. Like, setting up mines and stuff, setting up traps, everything, and then you like, went to combat, and yeah. Bioshock Infinite, oh man, and Elizabeth. Okay, I keep hearing everyone saying how she's um, a good character, but she's not. I'm I'm sorry, but she's not. Go ahead and type up your hate comments, but she's really not a... I, I don't know, man. It's just... And the story is just so inconsistent with itself. Like, they're trying... And they were trying too hard to make a story that was intelligent. And I've seen so many critics and fans praise the game for being uh, an intelligent story with all the time travel and console mechanics, stuff like that. That could have worked. That could have worked. If the game wasn't so inconsistent with itself, with so many plot holes, just uh, God, man, I have very, I have so many problems with the game. And another problem I have is that it sort of does what Bioshock 2 does with the little two wheeling thing, except now instead of having a whole arsenal of weapons, you have two, you have two guns. And guess what? You know how you're, you know how in Bioshock Infinite, whenever you're about to run out of ammo, it tell, it gives you a prompt on screen saying you're running out of ammo. You better find more. Guess what? It's really hard to find ammo of that same type of gun because all the enemies will be using just different kinds of guns. You could be using a machine gun. All the enemies will probably be using a shotgun. You could, be, um, you could be using, um, you could be like I said, and vice versa. You could be using a shotgun. Everyone's else, everyone else is using a machine gun. Well, actually, shotgun, actually shotgun. Trying to find one guy though, running around using those, uh, using those powers. Yeah, that would be hard. But still, you get the idea. Okay, uh, enough ranting. Now, I'm not a fan of multiplayer games as much as I was as much I was used to back then. And back in the day, many people when they um, when they played multiplayer shooters, it was they mostly flocked to Call of Duty. Me, Battlefield for days, man. I'm talking both. I'm talking Battlefield Three back in 2011, dude. It was my multiplayer shooter of choice, Doug. Uh, like, oh man, all the strategy and planning that went into. Um, that went into every set. I mean, not every settlement. Every um, every conflict was so amazing. My favorite modes are rush and conquest. I I'm not a huge fan of team deathmatch mainly because well, there's no depth to it really. I'm sorry, it's just no depth to it. But I love the objective based um, game modes and the DLC for it. Um, it was the way they did the way EA did the DLC was kind of wrong in Battlefield 3. Like back to Karkin, um, how they had the whole. Um, how they hold the whole special edition of Battlefield 3. I'm not gonna get into that. Now, Battlefield 4, I got this back during a uh, summer of, uh, back during last summer of 2016. It's awesome. It, it also holds a candle up to Battlefield 3 as well. I'm still, 
I, I'll play I'll play multiplayer on video games every now and then, but I just really don't mess around with multiplayer anymore. But still, be, these games are really awesome shooters. And the ones after them, like Battlefield Hard, Battlefield Hardline was garbage. Okay, let's be honest, Battlefield Hardline was garbage. I'm not gonna lie about that. As a, as a Battlefield fan, Hardline was just, just straight up garbage. Battlefield One, it did okay. It was okay, I guess. I mean, like it's not. I don't know. It's not gonna. Um, it's not gonna like set the world on fire, but still. Okay, so we're talking about three games on one disc. You saw this during uh you guys saw this during uh Thanksgiving when I when I made this video on video game pickups. Metal Gear Solid 3. I mean not Metal Gear Solid 3. <laughs> what am I doing? Metal Gear Solid HD collection. Why did I say Metal Gear Solid 3? But these three games are awesome, and I, it just feels so nice to be experiencing these games again. Especially um, since I played these games heavily on the PlayStation 2. Except, with the exception of uh, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker um, right here. Um, I did see a few friends of mine back in elementary school, they had their PSPs up. They would do uh, multiplayer sessions of either... I couldn't tell which Metal Gear game it was. It was either Metal Gear Acid or Metal Gear um, Peace Walker. I really couldn't tell because I haven't played. I've I've not put my hands on half on Acid yet, even though I have a PSP. But anyways, I'm just gonna run down. So Metal Gear Solid 2. It's um, it's actually um, one of the it's actually like one of the most popular stealth games on the PlayStation 2. And at the time, many people loved it. It was wildly popular. It got so many. I got so many like five stars, ten stars on many websites at the time, and like everyone loved it. I loved it. Um, my friend's dad loved it. <laughs> a Metal Gear Solid 3 is my favorite Metal Gear Solid game of the entire franchise. Okay, I love Metal Gear Solid 3. It's my favorite because well, it takes place in a jungle instead of like um, the typical urban environment or a little or the typical like um, military base. It takes place in a jungle in Russia, and it takes place during the Cold War too. So that's a plus. Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, I haven't played much of this yet. I still love it, it's solid. <laughs> like the like that pun. <laughs> now one game my stepbrother and I, we every time I fire this game up and my stepbrother sees me playing this, he was like he tells me, get the second controller. Resident Evil 5. Now story-wise, Resident Evil 5 is garbage. I mean like it's not oh yeah, and gameplay wise it um Gameplay wise, it's actually pretty solid for um, for an action game, but as a Resident Evil game, it sucks. It's but anyways, it's a it's it's you can play you can either choose to play either single player or um, or co op with a friend of yours, um, either locally or through multiplayer. I mean, not multiplayer, locally or online. But story what like I said, story wise, this game sucks. And, um, mainly because it's, it's a whole, it derives away from the sur survival horror, um, from the survivor horror elements that was Resident Evil 4. Mainly, be and, mainly because, well, you're just going around shooting dudes, and then a bigger dude comes on screen, you gotta find out how to take him down. Uh, it's just so mindless. And guess what? I don't know how, but the zombie is, the zombies somehow learn to shoot guns later in the game. Lord knows how that happens, but still. Uh, zombies shooting guns should not happen. Zombies tearing you up, like zombies tearing you apart, trying to eat, trying to eat your skin off or something, trying to eat your eye out. That should be happening, okay? I don't remember a zombie being able to fire an RPG off his shoulder. <laughs> I'm sorry. But anyways, this is the game that me and my stepbrother love to co-op, mainly because of all the strategy and planning that goes into it, and because how we're how we're always having each other's backs too. It's just really fun. As a matter of fact, I recently picked up a. Uh, just recently, I picked up uh, Resident Evil 6, and I haven't touched it yet, mainly because I've been busy with school. But I'm looking forward to it. I know that I know that the story sucks for Resident Evil 6, and it's um an act it's an action shooter, just like it's a little just like its predecessor. But still, I'm looking forward to a mindless action game, and I'm also looking forward to co-oping it with my stepbrother. As oh yeah, fun funny story on the final boss, my stepbrother and I, every time, every time. We get on that boss. Every something just has to fall apart. Mainly because um, one of us will choose the sniper. The other we're gonna hang. The other's gonna play as Sheva, who's hanging off that rock. And we have to like, we have to like uh, just get t um, carpal tunnel syndrome, just mashing the X button, just going, just mashing the X button, going like, 
just going like that, um, trying to trying to make sure Sheva doesn't fall. And then you have to mash the X button more by um, where you have to like go where Chris has to go up to this boulder. Then you have to mash the X button like that. <laughs> it's so hilarious. As a matter of fact, Resident Evil 4 and 5 and maybe 6, I haven't touched it yet, will probably leave you with carpal tunnel syndrome. Worse than uh, worse than a fox player in Super Smash Bros. Melee. Now these games, I I remember when I first got into them. My God, man, I am so glad. Oh yeah, and I also got my brother, uh, my half brother, into this too. Infamous. I love these games, except for the third one. The third one, the third one can die, or it could have gotten better. But still. I love the infamous games. They are so awesome, mainly because they have this little um, this little morality system called karma, where um, where if you have if you're good or you're evil, different outcome I mean, different outcomes of the story will happen. It's pretty it's pretty average, I know, but still, you also get powers based off of which karma rank you are. Like say if you're um, if you're evil, you'll get um, you'll get powers that'll like do that'll like chain that'll chain along um, your electricity attacks. And I'm talking about the first infamous game. Now, you won't believe how I discovered this game. I discovered this game um, after PlayStation Network got shut down. Like It was a month after PlayStation Network got back up. But after PlayStation Network got um, got back up in 2011, then um, what happened was that PlayStation was doing this little service where they were um, giving free where they were giving free games to players that were um, to, to anyone that was had an account with PlayStation Network. So the t so the two games I got was um, was Infamous One. And um, this zombie in this over this overhead arcade shooter called um, Dead Nation. Dead Nation. That's a pretty good arcade shooter. It's too bad. It too bad it's uh, underrated, and uh, many critics didn't like it. Still, I love it. Okay. It's also by the way, check out Dead Nation too if you're looking for a game for a co-op game with your buddy. It's really awesome. Play it with your buddy online or locally. It doesn't matter. But anyways, we discovered. Well, I discovered this game first when um. After PlayStation Network was giving away two free games, um, after when they got shut down by by a hacker group, it was, it, oh man, the story was just so enlightening. And a little fun fact: I actually played the demo of this a year before, I um, a year before the, um, <clears throat> sorry about that, a year before the, I mean before um, I got this after Sony was shut down. But still. And the, and the sequel was an amazing sequel. I loved it. The endings were both satisfying and sad too. But and they were both satisfying and sad at the same time. Oh man, just seeing the stuff that Cole went through, how he dealt with all the struggles as a um, as being either a hero or a villain, it was enlightening. And all the and the and the gameplay is awesome too. You get to choose between well, the melee combat in Infamous Two is better than the me melee combat in uh, the first game. But it's mostly because Infamous One was a uh, new IP, so you can't really. Oh God, my room got dark. Hold on, Hold on guys, I am turning on the lights. <sighs> Sorry about that, guys. It's just that when the sun gets covered by the clouds, um, then it like just darkens up a bit, and my room got extremely dark. So, anyways, and there's also overexposure on my posters. Why? What's add to that? Wow. So anyways, the infamous the infamous games are just really, really awesome, and they're well done. Fun fact, I also went and got the physical copy of this um, last year in a, for like 99 cents. Really, really good deal, because because GameStop was having a like, huge summer sale on all their games. As a matter of fact, I got Double Survivor 2 for $5. Now, this was the one of the first games I got when I got my own. When I got my first, like when I... <laughs> Alright, so during Christmas of 2010, I got my first PlayStation 3, like my own PlayStation 3. Now the reason why I didn't have the fat model, like I, the one my dad got in 2008, was because my mom and dad had divorced, um, had divorced sometime around that time, and uh, my dad went and took his PlayStation 3 with him. So I was left um, without a PlayStation 3 for like, um, I'd say a year or two, I forgot. So anyways, I was left without a PlayStation 3, the only games I had... The only game consoles I had to play was my Nintendo Wii and my um, my Nintendo Wii. My uh, what else did I have? God, my Nintendo Wii, my um, PlayStation Two, and um, that was just that was just about it. I had lots of titles on my PlayStation Two, so I I wasn't really that sad when I had to see the PlayStation Three go after my dad got divorced with mom. 
So anyways, this was one of the first games I got when I got my own PS3. Sonic 06. I know. I know. It's so hilarious. It, it's just so hilarious looking- Oh, finally. Sun came out. And there's still- there's still overexposure. I can't believe that. Anyways, we're gonna ignore that for now. Now, Sonic 06, I got this when I was, um, after I turned 11 in November of 2010. But, yeah. Got this for Christmas. Um, now, at the time, I thought it was a- oh, I thought it was a- it was an awesome game. Looking back at it as a mature young adult, yeah, I wouldn't think so. But this- oh man, the characters, dude, the story, god. I could rip apart this game in so many ways. Like, like, I could sit here for an hour and rip apart this game, but I'm gonna choose not to, mainly because I have, like, billions of other games in front of me, and I want to get to them fast, but still, it was one of the first games I got um, with my own PS3 console, and it was the Super... Uh, not Super Slim, it was the Slim. Oh yeah, um, little fun facts. You, um, the reason why I don't have my PS3 Slim and I have that fat PS3 down there is because... The PS3 Slim died at least a year or two after. The reason why it died was because, um, was because well, it was having some problems with the um, with displaying the picture. Okay, it would not display the picture on my TV on any TV, whether it be um, a CRT TV with like a glass display or an HD TV. Now, anyways, what happened was that it finally gave out on me. I don't know what happened, but so, but then I found out a couple years no many years later that I had to hold down the start, I mean not start, but the on button for a few seconds. Then it'll reset back to normal. So, hundreds of dollars going down the drain. All right, now this, now the, these games I got into um, on, I got the second game of this series on the, um, in the same year, I mean on the same day as, um, as well. It was on um, Christmas of 2010. Uncharted 2. This is what drew me into the Uncharted games. Now the thing is, my mom didn't actually buy this game for me. It came in the little bundle for the PlayStation 3 that my mom was buying. So cool. It was like an extra game. I loved it. But Uncharted 2 is what drew me into the Uncharted franchise in the first place. Um, because that year I would also get, um, well not that year, but later on I would rent um, Uncharted 1 from um, at my dad's house on a Friday night. and. During 2013, three years later, I would also get this game from a friend of mine. Now, a little s funny story about Uncharted 3. Now, all right, here's a little story about how I got Uncharted 3. It's kind of hilarious. I was playing Modern Warfare 2 one day. Uh, um, it, it was like on a Saturday or a Sunday. No, Saturday. So it was a Saturday. I was playing Modern Warfare 2. What happened was that this dude was, uh, there. I could not, I was entering so many of these games, right? They were ha they were just full of modders, hackers. Now, <clears throat> now here's the funny part. The last straw was when um, one of those modders they took a rocket launcher, and what <laughs> I can't stop thinking about this story. The modder took a rocket launcher, and he fired at me, right? Now here's the thing. He fired. <laughs> he fired a helicopter. Why not the rocket launcher? I, I, you can't make this up because these modders will do anything, man. I'm telling you. So that was the last draw for me. And um, previously, my friend had um, offered, had offered to trade um, Uncharted 3 for another game, which I wasn't willing to trade. I forgot which one it was. It was my friend. Um, crap. Ah, oh, man. Ah, I forgot. I forget people's names most of the time. I'm sorry, but still. Anyways, he traded in. Um, he was. I offered Modern Warfare 2 um, for him after I um, after our, that little incident with that little, with that rocket launcher. Honestly, I couldn't take Modern Warfare 2 anymore because of all the hackers, modders, and stuff. And the story, I've played it too many times. And the Spec Ops mode, it's good for um, co-op, like say couch co-op with your best friend, or you want to go online, like all the other games I just mentioned. So yeah. Okay. We've got many more games to come, trust me, we do. The Bat- now, we have the Batman Arkham Trilogy. Now, I first- I first got into the Arkham games back in, uh, 2010, a year after it came out. Um, because that was when I made my, uh, 
That was when I made my PlayStation, not PlayStation, yeah, PlayStation Network account in 2010. It was my first PlayStation Network account, and I was looking through the store trying to see what kinds of demos were available, because previously, like on the previous gen, I had, uh, there were like demo discs, and um, I, I, I used to get demo discs from friends of mine or from magazines, but now that I, now that I have this little digital store, I was thinking, you know what, let's try some cool demos. So I went and tried Batman Arkham Asylum. God almighty, it was awesome. The stealth gameplay, the, the combat, having Batman going and breaking dudes' arms and stuff, knocking them unconscious, really awesome. And then, um, I guess you could say, and and then like four year, four or five years later, I went and got Batman Arkham City for like six dollars. It's a good sequel. It is an amazing, amazing, amazing sequel. I love this. I love Arkham City. It, it's a good follow-up to um, Arkham Asylum. Oh, hold on, let me get this too. On. And then comes Batman Arkham Origins. I have not completed this yet, but it's a pretty good it's a pretty good game and it's also a good sequel to the trilogy. <clears throat> and the final nail in the coffin for me was recently Batman Arkham Arkham Knight. Now I'm halfway through this game right now, um, mainly because I'm playing other games on my PS4 like Persona 5, Far Cry 4, uh, a few other games. So yeah, I'm gonna get back onto the I'm gonna get back into that game, but still, all of these games are good. And one thing I could point out is that did this game really need a multiplayer though? Like that's the thing I hate about devs sometimes. I hate when developers just shove in a multiplayer a multiplayer mode for no reason other than to just, you know, um, I don't know, maximize profits or something. Or because they think players want multiplayer in a story driven game. It didn't work for Bioshock 2 and it's not gonna work for Batman Arkham Origins, I'm sorry. Okay, this game is genius. If you're a fan of Rockstar, get this game. L.A. Noir. I I remember watching like um E3 E3 trailers um gameplay of this game back in 2011, and I'm like, God, why can't I have this game? Because it's some um, it's an amazing detective horror. Now the game is a whodunit. It's kind of like a whodunit murder mystery while you're dealing with the struggles of. Um, of your past life and stuff, playing as Cole Phelps, who was a former World War II veteran. This game is awesome. I love it. I love everything about it. And the thing is that I love how it focuses more on um, on logic puzzles and stuff like that instead of just straight up action. Yes, there are action pieces in the game, but still, I love the whole I love the whole solving mystery things. It reminds me sort of of the um, it reminds me of the Phoenix Wright games, except you're not playing as a lawyer. You're playing you're playing as a straight up detective, dude. I'm telling you. Now this game I got on I got on my birthday back in 2013. Grand Theft Auto 5. I got this November 3rd, 2013, baby. November 3rd. I will never forget that day. It was also the day I also got. It was also the day I got Bioshock Infinite on the same on the same console as well. But Grand Theft Auto 5, I hold this dear to my heart as one of my favorite Grand Theft Auto games. However, Grand Theft Auto, uh, where is it? Power. My favorite Grand Theft Auto game to this day is Grand Theft Auto Vice City on the PlayStation 2. Um, my dad played this a lot in front of me, and what I would do is that I would like uh, sneak around. I would like to like sneak around him. Whenever he wasn't around the PlayStation 2, I would like go and put in Grand Theft Auto Vice City, get, <laughs> complete a few missions, and then like uh, and then be, have it over with. And then I remember, um, I remember I got yelled at by my grandma after she found me playing this, which was not too fun. But anyways, I love all the features it has, but another thing is that I prefer San Andreas over this, mainly because it had more features, custom um, custom stuff, and it had a better story in my opinion. But hey, everyone has different preferences to each their own, right? Okay, should we do this one? No. <clears throat> Next up is Prince of Persia, 2000, the 2008 reboot. Little, um, little known, little known fact. I love the Prince of Persia games, the PlayStation 2 titles, the old school titles before that. I love Prince of Persia, and this, and this right here. I remember watching um, E3 um, gameplay trailers of, um, of Prince of Persia. It, it was, it was pretty awesome. It's a pretty good platformer and, um, and adventure game. You have that little princess following you around. You're playing as, um, you're playing as the prince. Rest in peace, dude. <laughs> 
but this is one of this is one of my favorite platformers on the PlayStation 3. And if you're into platformers or puzzle solving, it's recommended that you get Prince of Persia 2008 or get Prince of Persia: The Sands of Time on uh, PlayStation 2. Matter of fact, get the um, re get the HD remakes of Prince of Persia on the PS3. You won't regret it. I promise you. Okay, so we're gonna cover three um, another three games at once. Final Fantasy games on the PlayStation 3. Now it's no secret. It's no secret. I'm a huge Final Fantasy fan. Now the thing is that I remember seeing trailers for um, two thousand. I mean for 2010's um, Final Fantasy 13, which to be honest, it's. I know it's popular to hate Final Fantasy 13. Um, I don't hate Final Fantasy 13. Okay, let's get this straight. I don't hate the game. Um, in fact. In fact, I actually enjoyed playing it. It's just that it's really, it just really didn't appeal to me for some reason. I don't know why. I just didn't get, to, I just didn't get that feel of playing a Final Fantasy game because it tries too hard to experiment with the ATB active time battle system. And really, the main character Lightning, she's unlikable. I'm sorry. Um, as as good looking as she is, she's sort of unlikable, and she's just so emotionless. And, I don't know, man. God. Next, but um, another game we have is Final Fantasy XIII 2, the sequel to Final Fantasy XIII. As a matter of fact, matter of fact, even though this is a PlayStation 3 video, I'm going to be covering uh, Lightning Returns next. Now, this game decides to go and do the last thing it ever it ever should have: time travel, because we all because we all want a more coherent storyline than Kingdom Hearts. Am I right? <laughs> well, yes, the time travel. I. I remember I actually had to delete a save file because I I spent like three weeks away from playing Final Fantasy 13 2 and I forgot and I got stuck on what I was supposed to do because of all these stupid timelines. Who sh like why should I care about all these timelines and stuff? And God, man, that that new character I forgot his name. He was the one in those robes and that little sword. God, I hate him too. He's an unlikable character. And Sarah, she's yeah, she's boring. I'm sorry. I just. And Final Fantasy XV, it's an okay game too, but still, yeah. But we are going to talk about my favorite Final Fantasy game in the entire franchise, Final Fantasy X. As a matter of fact, um, I got this, I got the HD remake for my PlayStation 3 and my PlayStation Vita too. Now, what happened was that they increased, in, they didn't really do anything special with this. All they did was um, add trophies and increase the textures of the game, and that's about it. But Final Fantasy X, I hold to my heart mainly as one of my fa no, as my favorite Final Fantasy game uh, of the entire franchise. Now the thing is that I I enjoy the story about how um, Titus is going through uh, about how Titus is going through time and stuff. He's trying to get back to Xanarch, and it's really it's really emotional too, especially with um especially his interactions with Yuna as well. I really I just really enjoy seeing those, especially that laughing scene. And I like how I like how the developers intentionally made the laughing scene to be awkward too. It's awkward to the player. It's awkward to all the characters watching them. It's awkward to everyone. But it has a but it shows a little bonding moment between Yuna and Titus. And yes, I know his name is pronounced Titus, but Titus sounds a whole lot better. Okay. Oh yeah, hold on. Where are you? Final Fantasy Lightning Returns. It's I don't know what to call this game. I really don't know what to call this. Is it, an, is it trying to be an action RPG? Is it Kingdom Hearts in the disguise of um, Final Fantasy? What 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 in the world is it? And the story, God, man, it's about Lightning trying to save the world from being destroyed by I think God himself or a few other I don't know some kind of higher power. But the story just fell apart there. It, it could have only gotten worse. And they drastically had to change the gameplay because reasons. Sorry about that. Okay. Next we have... Now I got this game in a Christmas, on Christmas of 2013, which was, um, which was months after I moved to Southern Virginia. Fallout 3 Game of the Year Edition. I got this game on Christmas when my dad offered to take me to GameStop for to shop for a few games um, as a Christmas gift, and I was genuinely, genuinely excited because 
I hadn't played Fallout at the time. I hadn't played Fallout Three in like two years. I did play the um, play the old school Fallout games, which was one and two back in um, um, back when I was in uh, back when I first started middle school on my on my crappy little laptop. But still, um, this game was pretty awesome. I loved it, and it has all the DLC for it. Um, the, here's the here's a list of the DLC. Operation Anchorage is where you enter a military simulation, and you're fighting and you're fighting like for a base in um, in Anchorage, Alaska. It's talking. It's basically around the time when the Chinese tried to attack um, attack Alaska in the game. My favorite DLC. My favorite DLC in this game has to be the pit. Now the pit is where you travel all the way to Pittsburgh. Um, and let me tell you, the place is a huge, huge mess right now. It's overrun by slave masters and stuff. Um, people are crying, and, and um, you have to do your best to solve the whole issue. And it's my favorite DLC because of all the stuff that's going on, and the missions too. My favorite mission is the arena. Now the arena reminds me of the of that one arena of the arena from Elder Scrolls IV: Oblivion, where um, where you like go into um, where you like go into the arena, you just go fight and stuff, uh, whack stringing your sword and that. <laughs> It was so hilarious, but yeah, in, the, in this version of the arena, you're using straight up guns, pal. Like, you're using guns, grenades, molotovs, anything you could muster. You... Okay. Oh, no, no, I'm not done reading the DLC, I forgot. Broken Steel, um, now here's what Broken Steel does. Here's why it's special. Broken Steel increases your level cap, your level cap from all the way from 20 to 30. Now, after your level cap has risen, then, um... Now here's the thing about Broken Steel. It's not DLC that you can get once you install the game. Broken Steel occurs after you complete the main storyline of the game. Which really which was really odd, I think and that's why I sort of felt like the ending was unfinished until I played until I played um until I played uh what was it? Until I played Broken Steel, I'm sorry. But yeah, I felt like the ending was missing something. I don't know why maybe they were running out of data for the console versions, or maybe they didn't have enough time to implement the ending, but I don't know, I could come up with a whole lot of theories. Um, next is Point Lookout. Now this is where you travel down to the deep south and um... You, oh yeah, you take, you travel, not the deep south, I don't know what, I don't know why I said the deep south, but... This, you travel down to Maryland. Now, you, now you're, you're traveling along the coast of Maryland and you're doing like a whole bunch of stuff. There's also this storyline with this criminal in um, in Point Lookout where he has wanted posters all over the place and you're supposed to collect them. I don't know why, but <coughs> I don't know who this guy is or what he's tr or what he was up to because um, um, when I played Point Lookout, I just got in, did the missions, and got out, which was pretty stupid of me because I should have gone and interacted more with people to see if they had more side quests. But I don't know. I sort of rushed um, playing Point Lookout. Finally, is the most weirdest DLC on this disc: Mothership Zeta. Mothership Zeta. Okay, so what happens is that you. So you get you approach a um, what happens is that you approach a UFO, right? And then all of a sudden you're um, this whole this beam like just takes you all the way up. You're put into an alien you're put into like an alien chamber and stuff. It's wacky. So you're trying to fight for your freedom and fight for your way out of the um, spaceship so you can get back um, get back home to post-apocalyptic Earth. It's really weird, but you do get what I do like about this DLC is that you get some pretty overpowered weapons with, well, weapons that are hilariously overpowered. I remember defeating a Death Claw with one of the blasters from Mothership Zeta. Like, it only took me, it only took like 10 or 12 hits, but god, man, I, I don't know if it was my level, if how I would, I don't know if it was because of, um, I was a high level at the time, or because, um, or because I was like, um, just that good, I don't know. Okay. Next we have up is Fallout New Vegas. I I actually like this game. It's pretty awesome. And um, but the thing is, I prefer Fallout 3 over New Vegas when it comes to um, when it comes to which Fallout game on the, is on the current gen. But still, Fallout New Vegas. It's I love how I love how stylish it is and how like um, how it designs some of the menus after like some, something you would see in a New Vegas casino. Um, you play as a courier who gets shot in the head and survives. Strangely enough. Although there have been people that in history that survived getting shot in the head, let's be real here. But yeah, after you get shot in the head by that little criminal, you're sent to hunt him down, and uh, that's about it. That's about all I can think of. 
Oh yeah, you also get involved in this little civil war with the um, with the NCR, the Northern California Republic, and um, some other team. I I haven't touched this game in a I haven't touched this game in a while. Like I'd say two years. It's, I think you no no I haven't yeah I haven't touched this game since 2015. But so yeah. Oh yeah, we have two more Bethesda games to add to the pile: Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion and Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Oblivion being my favorite. So, Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, I just love this, I just really, really love the story of this. It's about some kind of cult called the Mythic Dawn that are just going around, and they're trying to open the gates to Oblivion by using Oblivion Gates. And the Oblivion Gates are actually the um, shape of, actually the shape of this logo, which you can faintly see, but it's there. Now, now when you get to the, now when you open the Oblivion Gates, you are in some form of, you're in some form of, um, what I can describe as hell. Now, that's all I can describe it as. But still. Now, what you have to do is you have to close these Oblivion Gates, and um, that's about it. But the story revolves more than closing Oblivion Gates. It's about um, it's about some kind of king that gets assassinated, and then you are supposedly the chosen one. <laughs> yeah. Skyrim just felt... I'm sorry, guys. I know it's an unpopular opinion. Skyrim is not my favorite Elder Scrolls game. I, I, like, I like all the other Elder Scrolls games better than that one, but still. Skyrim just felt lifeless to me. I mean, like, I enjoyed fighting dragons. Fighting dragons felt exhilarating, I will admit that. But, but crawling through the dungeons and all, and the puzzles, dude, a kinder, dude, a kindergartner can solve these puzzles easily. That's how easy these puzzles are. You could give a five-year-old the controller, have them take control for a few seconds, and solve these puzzles. They are, they're extremely easy. I don't know why, but still. And uh, just so many other things in this game just don't feel right. Skyrim's a good game, but it's not as good as all the other Elder Scrolls games that I played. Okay, next we have Mortal Kombat. Now, I got this a year after uh, Mortal Kombat 9 released in 2011. Got this in 2012 for my birthday. Um... Yeah, I love. I really love the character roster. It brings. I love how it's a good reboot of a classic series, um, because Mortal Kombat Nine. It <clears throat> it does everything right. The fatalities, the combos, the characters, and everything. I also love. I also love how much how much life is in this is in this game. I love the challenge tower too. It's awesome. Now, if you got if you have a PlayStation if you have a PlayStation Three and you have Mortal Kombat Nine. You can also get to play as Kratos. Now you don't get any Xbox exclusive character on the 360 strategy. I don't know why. They could have, if they were to do an Xbox exclusive character, it could have been Marcus Phoenix from the Gears of War franchise because that's one of Microsoft's um, franchise favorites. So why not have like um, Marcus Phoenix for, like um, chopping up people with his um, with his saw gun and stuff like that? That'd be pretty nice. This game I got to experience very recently. It's amazing. I don't know, I, I couldn't, I just, I don't know why I didn't pick it up a few years ago, I have regrets about that, but I got this for cheap last year, The Last of Us. I love the story, because the story is just more than about, the story is just more than about um, zomb killing zombies and stuff, it's also, it's also about, like, um, it's also about choices and stuff, and it shows the bond between Ellie and Joel very greatly, even though I did start to hate Joel, like, sometime, um, sometime after the apocalypse occurred. But still, I grew to love all these characters. As a matter of fact, these characters, they're both... You either love them or you hate them, too. Many people have a heartfelt, um, have a heartfelt, um... Just have a heartfelt bond with Ellie in how, how they relate to her. Well, not relate to her, but just, they just love her so much. Even I love Ellie. She's a pretty good, she's a pretty good character. Oh yeah, the multiplayer in this game is awesome, but... I, I just one thing I hate hate about multiplayer. I mean, some multiplayer is how is how is online passes. How I hate the how I will the. I hate online passes. Why why do you need to pay extra for a game you already paid for for sixty dollars to play the online? Great, the whole mountain of games though. Coming down to our last three games. So the Mass Effect games. Mass Effect 2, I mean Mass Effect 2 right here, I love Mass Effect 2. My favorite Mass Effect game in the entire trilogy. I just love all the characters, the story, the, ex the exploration, the shooting. I love everything about it, and the dialogue choices. So amazing. I love it. 
I also like how um, how if you choose like more um, more renegade options, the scars on Shepard's face get worse and worse. But you can visit the doctor's clinic to get that fixed up. But Shepard looks cool with those scars on his face. And Mass Effect 3, as much as people hit, oh hold on, Mass Effect 3, I don't know why people get angry at this game for um, for the ending. Like a game can't be bad just because of one ending, okay? But still, Mass Effect 3, I love this game as well. Also, what a fun fact, you can um. Hold on, let me take the disc out. But yeah, with Mass Effect 3, it also has changeable covers because Male Shepard is in Male Shepherd is in here. Let me pull it up to the camera. Yeah, Male Shepard is on this side, and uh, Female Shepard or Femme Shepard, as people like to call her, is on this side right here. And um, I, when I got this game, um, it was already on the Femme Shep side, so yeah, I decided to leave it here because I really wasn't about to waste my time flipping it over. But these games are good sci-fi shooters. I love them. And the ending, but the ending on Mass Effect 3, it's garbage. I will admit that. The ending of Mass Effect 3 is just total, total garbage. Final game. Our final game today, we're ending with Ratchet and Clank, uh, Ratchet and Clank Future, Tools of Destruction. Everyone was hyped about this game when it got announced for the PlayStation 3. I was hyped, my friends were hyped, um, a, few relatives of mine were, a few relatives of mine were hyped. Everyone was hyped for this game because we, it's all, it would be awesome to see our favorite, our favorite duo get, um, it was, it's awesome to see our favorite duo like on screen for the seventh generation. Like, God, man. I, and the gameplay is just awesome too. I love it. Matter of fact, I got Ratchet and Clank sitting down there on my PlayStation 2 collection. Um, yeah, I have Ratchet & Clank, uh, Size Matters for PlayStation 2. But yeah, I love the exploration. I love the traveling around in the open world. I just love everything, everything about it. And just, wow. I, and as a matter of fact, I, I replayed through this game two different times, um, just, just last year. Because, because the game is that fun to me. I, I love... I love Ratchet and Clank. I'm a huge Ratchet and Clank fan. Those two guys are one of my favorite mas well not mascots, but one of my favorite two of my favorite heroes now that you now that I think about it. Two of my favorite heroes on the PlayStation um brand. Next to um next to Nathan Drake. But still, I just love this game. If you want to get into Ratchet and Clank, um, either start off with um the PlayStation 2 titles, uh, or either start off with um what is it? Um Size Matters on the PlayStation 2. Or Ratchet and Clank um, Tools of Destruction. It doesn't matter. Get your feet wet somewhere. Oh yeah, by the way, if you're getting into Ratchet and Clank, avoid Ratchet and Clank all for one at all cost. Do not play that game. It is horrible. You will regret it. You will hate yourself for even putting yourself through that game. You'll hate you'll hate the fact that you spent money on it. Don't just don't drop even a dime on that game, okay? So that about wraps it up for this video. I enjoyed sharing my memories of the PlayStation 3 on um, during this video. And yeah, my shelf is messed up because um, I was like searching for which games to which games to show off, um, which games I had the fond mem I had fond memories of. So yeah, I, it was sort of hard to choose despite me tearing down my shelf. But yeah. So guys, I'm gonna end the video right here. So in the comment section below, tell me what was your favorite PlayStation 3 game and tell me why. I hope you guys enjoyed this video.